We're joined now by Scotland's First Minister, uh, Nicola Sturgeon, who is in Edinburgh this morning. Good morning to you. Uh, we know you're dialing in remotely uh, later Good on morning. today to the COBRA meeting, um, but I wonder if we could start with your reaction to President Trump's um, uh, comments overnight that travelling from Europe or the 26 countries in Europe has been banned for the next 30 days. Well, of course, all leaders have to take the decisions they think are right for their countries. But uh, looking at that decision, it strikes me as being more a case of being seen to do something than necessarily doing the right thing. Uh, when the virus is in a country, then the evidence and the advice is that travel bans are not uh, what is going to contain or delay it. It's the action you take within that country and you know certainly there is plenty of evidence that coronavirus is circulating widely already within the United States particularly I think on uh, the west and the east coast of the country um, you know Italy is probably a good example of the ineffectiveness of travel bans Italy was one of the first countries in fact it may have been the first country to ban all travel from China at the end of January and yet Italy now is in at the grip of an epidemic. So it's more important, I think, that we focus on the measures uh, within a country, uh, not to get rid of this virus, because unfortunately you cannot make a virus like this go away, but the challenge is to try to slow down its spread, to reduce the number of people that will be infected at any one time, because that's important to alleviate pressure on the National Health Service, and also, crucially, to take steps that will protect those that all of the evidence so far tells us are most, most susceptible to becoming seriously unwell. And that, in broad terms, are elderly people and people with other underlying health conditions. My view is that the time has come uh, to move from the policy of seeking to contain the virus into one that is about delaying it for the reasons I set out a moment ago. Um, and certain steps and measures will flow from that. The uh, earliest of those is likely to be advice to the general public that if anyone is experiencing symptoms, even quite mild symptoms that are indicative of coronavirus, then they should be self-isolating um, and staying at home perhaps for a period of seven days. And I think that is advice that is likely to come certainly from the Scottish okay. Government and yeah. uh, from other can governments I, across the I UK ask, very soon. Can I ask about that then? Because that is relying on individuals, isn't mm -hmm. it? You know, people who might have, feel that they have to go out to work. Um, mm -hmm. But what about if you're in a crowd of people where individuals have decided they're not going to self-isolate? You know, there are a number mm -hmm. of, I mean, you know, Six Nations, Wales, Scotland um, is uh, currently, as I understand, yeah. scheduled to go ahead. We've got the Euro qualifiers, Scotland play um, Israel. I yeah. mean, those sort of big sporting events, should they now mm -hmm. be cancelled or suspended? So I, so I think this is a very important question. And again, speaking for myself and the Scottish Government, we are looking very closely at exactly that question uh, as we move into this containment phase and you know, are, are looking at reaching decisions on this uh, over the course probably of today. Now, let me just address that point very squarely in terms of some of the rationale for that. The, the advice, the expert advice, and uh, I, like uh, the Prime Minister, the other First Ministers across the UK, are very much being informed by scientific advice in the decisions we're taking. The advice we're getting on mass gatherings is that cancelling, cancelling them doesn't have a significant impact on reducing and delaying the spread of the virus. But that's not the same as saying it has no impact, and that's an important point. But there are wider issues here um, as well that we have to consider as we uh, look at our wider planning for dealing with uh, this significant challenge, which is it's going to be. So, for example, if you take mass gatherings, football matches, for example, they need to be policed. They need to have uh, emergency uh, medical ambulance cover. We're going into a period where... Uh, our emergency services, our NHS in particular, will be under significant uh, challenge and significant pressure. Uh, we may see all of our workforces uh, affected by high absentee rates because of sickness. So there's a wider issue here about whether cancelling those kind of events is the right thing to do if it was to reduce to pressure you, on our frontline emergency workers. That's an interesting workers. point, isn't it? That sort of, well, is it, it necessary, it is will it be necessary to, to have health workers at those sorts of events when the NHS is under so, so much that's my point. pressure. And yeah. 
That's exactly, that's exactly my point. Can I say, these kind of decisions, although we are collaborating and seeking to make decisions on a four nations UK-wide basis, these decisions will be down to me and the Scottish Government in Scotland as they will be to other governments in, in different parts of the UK. And the point I'm making, and I think I don't want to get ahead of the decisions we will take over the course of today, but I think if you listen to me carefully, then I'm saying that not just from a, a scientific and perhaps not even most importantly from that point of view, but from a wider resilience point of view, then I think there is a big question mark over whether large-scale events like that, whether it is sensible to allow them to proceed at the so moment. Are you suggesting that you might ban football matches in Scotland? I'm suggesting, I'm suggesting that we are looking very carefully right now at whether large-scale events, whether it would be right and sensible, given the situation we're facing right now, uh, to allow them to go ahead. Now, we've got, as we move from uh, this delay phase, in uh, containment phase, into the delay phase, obviously we've got to take decisions uh, on a proper, orderly basis, and that's what I'm going to seek to do. Uh, I'm just trying to be open with you about the thinking yeah. uh, that I and my government mm, are applying sure. to that, uh, without trying, of course, to speak for other governments who are... Uh, capable of speaking for themselves. Right. What, what about um, there'll be lots of people waking up in Scotland this morning with parents, uh, with children, sorry, getting their kids ready to go to school. Mm. Real concerns about what might happen with regards to schools. We're seeing it happening in other countries around Europe. You've mentioned Italy already. We know that, that Denmark has already uh, put in some drastic measures. They've closed schools, universities, yeah. public sector workers being sent home. At, at what would be the stage, uh, Nicola Sturgeon, whereby you would, as First Minister of Scotland, say we need to keep kids at home now and we need to stop uh, the students going to schools or colleges? Well, well, the stage I would get to that is when the experts that I am taking advice from would say that that is a beneficial thing to do in terms of reducing the spread of this virus. The clear advice at the moment is that that uh, is not recommended, uh, but it is being kept under review. Now, uh, just to be uh, clear, uh, one of them, it's not necessarily the only reason, if, if schools are closed, children have to go somewhere, mm. and uh, often children uh, gathering in more informal settings may actually be more at risk of the virus spreading uh, than they are at school, where teachers will be ensuring they follow proper hand hygiene practice, for example. So these are careful judgments. Um, these are issues that are being taken in intensely seriously um, and informed by the best scientific advice. And I think that's the responsible thing to do. Yep. Uh, so my message to the public is firstly that this is being taken seriously, but clear advice will be given when we are asking people to change their behaviour. Um, and it's important that that is the case. If we're not telling you not to do something, uh, then you can go about your normal business and do it. But this is a serious situation. I, I repeat a point I made earlier on. Uh, we cannot make this virus go away. It is highly likely now that significant numbers of us are going to get this virus. The vast majority will have very mild illness and a clear focus right now is in doing everything we can to protect those who are more susceptible to serious illness. But we cannot make this go away. We uh, need to focus on how we manage yeah. this outbreak, and reduce not, yeah. uh, and delay the spread and reduce the numbers infected at any one time. So